everyone, my name is Taylor Haggerty and I am an early childhood and special education major at Towson University. Today, I will be reading a book to you called The Remember Balloons and showing you an integrated arts activity based upon representation and inclusion. So this book is about, it tells a story about a young boy and his dear relationship with his aging grandfather. Connected through balloons that hold memories and stories, the young boy notices his grandfather begins to lose his balloons and eventually his memories, even of knowing his beloved grandson. Confused and upset, the young boy seeks his parents' help whereby they show him that he now has a whole new set of balloons, his grandfather's. And acquiring these treasured memories or balloons, the young boy discovers a new way to be with his grandfather through retelling him through all of his old stories and or memories. After reading through this beautifully written book, I will introduce an integrated arts activity that connects to the message given by the book. Now, this book is very long, so I encourage you guys to use the link below to watch a read aloud of the book. Not only does the read aloud go more in depth and slower with each page, but you guys can rewatch it multiple times before doing the activity to ensure that you and your child understand the overall message of the book. The integrated arts activity that we are doing today is called Memory Jar, but you will later find out that you do not have to be making a jar and will focus primarily on the visual arts and storytelling. This activity is primarily for the pre-K age level, but can also be very engaging and noteworthy for students older, um, depending on how you want to take the, um, the activity and how in depth you wanna go with it. So the first thing you need to do with this project is I would encourage you to sit down with your child and just you know talk about the book. Maybe encourage your child to um, answer some questions ask them what they liked about the book, what they disliked about the book, um, ask them to explain their thoughts and feelings towards the book, and then examine the story structure and illustrations of the book. You know, just kind of skim through each book, ask them what favorite balloon they saw or what color balloon was their favorite. Maybe ask them um, what character was their favorite. And these questions just help you understand and see if your child actually understands the concept and overall message of the book before you like dive into the integrated arts activity that I'm going to share with you guys. After your student or after your child, sorry about that, after your child goes through all of the questions, you can then share your memories with one another. Maybe encourage a child to close their eyes and think about um, the memory, memory balloons within the book. Maybe ask them what their memories would be, maybe to pick three like really vivid memories that they have and um, just talk about their memories. Maybe you can even share the memories that you like with your child. And then after you're done sharing with each other, I would ask your child to, you know, write or draw their memories, maybe like four or five memories on paper. Now, if your child can't write or has a hard time writing, they can fully draw on the paper with no words. Just something that will remind them of a specific memory. And they can draw or write their memories on any kind of paper. This is a color index card, but they can feel free to do it on standard um, white paper, construction paper. Um, you will see that for this activity, I did mine on post-it notes. And this one was about like taking my family and I like getting our dog, it says welcome home. So they don't have to be super in depth, but maybe um, just enough detail so you can remember like what you wrote and um, what the memory actually means when you go back to look at it. And then after you have created like four or five memories, I would fold all of them up into small little pieces and put them off to the side. And then after you folded everything, you'll need something to store your memories. Now, even though the title of this activity is called Memory Jar, you are not limited to just making a jar. You can make a basket, a bag, you can make, you can store your memories in a cup or you can store your memories in an empty tissue box. You can even hang your memories up on the wall. If you have a bulletin board or some tape, that is completely fine too. It's, it's really up to you and what you have access to at your home. Now I'm gonna show you the materials that I would suggest using. Now, 
you can use any art supplies that you have at your house, um, whether it be, you know, just stickers or just crayons or markers, that's fine. Or if you guys have feathers, paint, popsicle sticks, color and pencils, those would all be good um, things to incorporate too. But it's really up to you of what you, how you want to decorate your base or memory jar or container. Here are some examples that I actually made. Uh, I will start with the more like sophisticated ones first. This one is actually a jar, it's a mason jar. And I just spray painted it with um, paint. And then my memories are actually on these little things. You can see I wrote on the popsicle stick. So again, you don't have to write your memories on paper as long as you have you know, a writing utensil and something to write your memories down on. These don't even have pictures, these are just words. So this might be like for more advanced students who can write. And then up here is just tissue paper to represent flowers. So altogether, it looks like a flower vase. That's what I was kind of going for with this one. Or um, this might be a really good example for right now because it's the colder seasons. Um, you might have an empty tissue box laying around at home. You could use that as your um, memory keeper. I took all the tissues out of mine and I just decorated the outsides. I painted the top and used some sticky glitter on the sides and said, wrote my jar out of paint on each part. And then you can just put your memories inside there. Or if you don't have those things, that's okay too. You can use sandwich baggies. I know a lot of you might have these at your house to pack lunches or little snacks. So you could draw whatever you want. And it doesn't have to be, your drawings don't have to relate to the theme of the book. They can be anything. It could be your favorite animal, your favorite person. It could be a picture of you. Anything that you like, it's, it's completely up to you. It's open-ended. Or you could use brown paper bags. And I also wanted to mention that if you don't have art supplies at home, your feathers or your stickers, that's okay too, because you can easily go outside, pick up some um, leaves, some flowers, some grass, and just glue them on to whatever material, as long as they stick. And you can make your uh, memory jar out of that. So once your memory jar is completed, I'll use my tissue box as a sample. You'll put all your folded memories in. Pick it up, close your eyes, pick one out. And maybe just read it to whoever is nearby. Um, explain what your memory is about and why you chose to write or draw that memory down, why it's important to you. And then that will really sum up your activity. So now every time you have a new memory that you really wanna remember and keep, you can always find a new piece of paper or material to write it down with and just stick it in your memory jar. And then to extend on that, this activity, maybe ask your parent to call up a relative, a grandfather, a grandmother, a cousin, a friend and ask them what their memory, their favorite memory is. And when they tell you what their favorite memory is, you can even write down what their memories are and put them into your memory box because like the book, the grandson gains all of his grandfather's memories. So even though his gra the grandfather loses his memories, the little boy gains all of his grandfather's memories because his grandfather told the little boy all of his memories. So once someone tells you their memories, they're now your memories too. So you just slowly over the years or weeks, however long you wanna keep your box, you'll keep adding more and more memories to your box. And that really sums up to your activity. Make it as unique as you want. There's no limit as to what materials you use or how you use them. It's completely up to you. And I hope you have a really fun time creating your memory jar.